Well, welcome on, welcome all. Happy Thursday, Therapy Flow community. Good morning, everybody. And if you're watching the recording and you hear us always say happy Thursday, we do these Thursday mornings live Facebook group. So if you want to pop in, earmark, um, earmark the time slot on a weekly basis. You can ask questions uh, live to us, happy to respond if we see them come through the chat. Otherwise, catch the recording and learn. Today, uh, we're talking about something that we don't talk a lot about, which is AI and ChatGPT. I think that there are some incredible use cases, especially with the development of some new updates and releases this past week that the um, that the platforms have have made to the AI models. So I thought it was about time that we hop on here, share how we're using it, and how we're suggesting that our practices use it. Yeah, I love it, guys. AI is a super powerful tool, and uh, ChatGPT is the most common tool out there in this in this in this uh, space right now. Um, got bought up by Microsoft. There's 266 million visits um, in just the month of December, 2022. And Jeez. so that has, that is up to a billion now, uh, visits in February of 2023. And so that, you know, it's continuing to be used. Um, lots of people know it, lots of people are popping in on it and uh, leveraging it. So we want to make sure you guys know what you can and probably should do. Yeah. So before we get to some use cases this past week, ChatGPT released two major um, update use cases if you're on the premium plan at least. And I think they're just important to parse out and note. Number one is you can create your own custom GPT, it's called, which just essentially means it will let you filter in a bunch of instructions and then pre-upload a ton of source material, content, processes, material, whatever it is, books, your own writings, your own procedure guides, Again, it can literally be anything on a content level that you can upload, and it will train itself on that and be able to reference that consistently in your future conversations and threads with it. Huge update. We'll come back to that in a second. The second update is the amount of content you can send in a single chat. So it was pretty limited before on how much you could send. So you couldn't send essentially a book's worth of information and ask it to do things with it, format, instruct. So just essentially with the ability to train it on your own data and the ability in a single thread to send massive amounts of content, the use cases for what you can do with it and ask it to do will be massive because it can so quickly parse out information and produce new structures, flows, answer questions, and maybe as an abutment, you can also give other people access to the custom GPT to ask questions to, aka maybe your team or your marketing provider or other things as, as a use case material. So just some really incredible changes here that can really impact how you use it to grow your practice. Yeah, but before this release, you had to be a developer to really touch or do any of these things. And so now you can just go in, um, actually, we might even be able to tell you the exact way to do it, but there's a segment just up, up at the top left here, if you're logged into chat G and, uh, you can just create your own interface there, uh, your own GPT. Right. And so I, I, I want to touch on just the, uh, first segment, which is creating your own custom GPT. Um, this is immensely useful for team trainings. This can be immensely useful. If you create content, this can be immensely useful in really a lot of capacities, um, uh, because you can train it on source material, right? It's called knowledge base. You create a knowledge base for it and it learns that knowledge base, whether it's text, uh, it could be spreadsheets, um, it can be all kinds of things. And so if you have a spreadsheet about your practice, so like if you have financial information, you can upload your financial information spreadsheet and the GPT can learn and, and it understands information about your practice now. And so yeah. these, th there's some really profound impacts here, uh, because you can start asking it to do really interesting things that like m most people would take a lot of dollars to do. Um, so like analyze the spreadsheet, re remove duplicates. Um, you can have it do all kinds of interesting things. Um, and it's just really a cost saver, a time saver, among other things. If you've written like 15 to 20 blogs, you can ask it to learn how you write blogs. 
Um, and essentially what you can do is have it spit out blogs in your voice with right. your knowledge, with your information. And so it's really, really interesting um, to see what you can kind of pull out from each of these GPTs. And there's unlimited of them, so you can make as many as you want. Yeah. And I think with that, you know, Tilio just spit off a lot of different use cases there. But in that, that just the key point is your imagination is probably going to be a much larger limiter now going forward than the actual use cases of it. So in some ways, if you can sit down and say, hey, I wish this was easier. I wish I had an answer to this question. I wish it produced this level or quality. It's just saying, I need to feed it and give it so it can optimize. How do I need to ask it? How do I need to prompt it? How do I need to dig into it? There's there are a couple of things that you know I use and even we use it for. Is number one is yeah that learn how we do certain content. I write a newsletter weekly. I fed it my newsletters for an entire year, and now I can get it to create at minimum really solid templates on new process and topics if I feed it the specific information. So you can just save a lot of time in writing it, make it fix grammar errors and a lot of other things that just move certain things forward a lot faster. But other use cases is once it learns process content, especially for mental health content, it can reformat lots of content into new things. So something like creating a lead magnet or creating a blog out of a short form copy, taking a meeting transcript that you had showing one of your team members how to onboard or do something. And maybe after it, you film and take transcripts of the 10 calls you had with onboarding your new therapist or your new admin specialist, you'd feed all of that to ChatGPT and ask it to create a nuts and bolts onboarding guide for you and your team to reference going forward. You could just create a knowledge base, give your team access to it and say, hey, go ask questions to this first. And if you don't get an answer, then come and ask me, right? So there's lots of use cases here that sky's the limit for sure. Yeah. I And without getting into like, because I, I think there's like interesting elements here where it's like, can you optimize prompts to like improve or change or do different things um, within the system? I, I don't think we need to touch on that on this, conver on this brief conversation today. <laughs> it's like masterclass level things uh, that might take a little bit longer to kind of sit down and produce. But um, when the way that I might think about this at this point in time is if you had a personalized assistant that could take time off of your calendar um, and you could maybe delegate out to, uh, what would you want that personalized assistant to do? And then how can you create the material to train that personalized assistant? So if you're like, hey, look look at my calendar right now. My calendar is 40 hours a week of this one task, 30 hours of, of, of this task, and 10 hours of this task. That's my total time. I sleep for this this much time. I work on these kinds of activities this much time. I'm responding to team members. I'm dealing with fax things. I'm dealing with like slow optimization processes in my business. I'm dealing with X, Y, Z things. These are all things that are bogging me down. Take a list of some of those elements and maybe look at the, the big time sucking elements and see if there's a way where you can delegate that to AI. So it might take a little bit of time, it might take a little bit of energy, but it's probably very possible at this point. And I think the time saving aspect is massive category, maybe the first place to do things. But then the flip side is what can I AI speed up so now it's actually worth my time doing? man, social media takes so much time and that's why I don't do it. Or looking at my numbers and getting this spreadsheet to work and format the way that I want. I don't actually want to read this and make decisions about this, right? Time, emotional investment and energy, some of those things. Uh, what aren't you doing in your business that you either want to or should, but can't or won't because of the barrier to entry that maybe this will make easier going forward? Yeah. My, my last maybe encouragement on, on some of these GPTs is just try to get it to like 80% of what you could do, right? Yeah. I think sometimes where people get really discouraged is you ask ChatGPT to do something, or maybe you've asked it to do something in the past, and it doesn't quite turn out the way that you want. And you're like, well, this is going to be a little bit rough. 
Uh, this is going to be rough around the edges, or it's going to take more time for me to like go back and edit it and do a, you know whatever process that you you would need to. Uh, but the truth is that that kind of happens with people too. And so if your employee is underperforming, like underperforming where they're like, ah, it's probably like at the 50% range, you're going to have to train and, and set better expectations and communicate differently or better anyway. And yeah. so just like a person, you will want to communicate, set better expectations, do better training, provide them a better knowledge base in this case. And so you try to get an employee or a person to do it at like 80% of what you would do anyway. And either way, that saves you money, saves you time, saves you energy, and probably emotional bandwidth on a lot of these things. And so keep that maybe in in in, in mind. Try to get it to do, you know, maybe the 80% of the work there. And uh, I think, what is it? The 10, 80, 10 rule. You do 10% work. The machine does 80% of the work. And then you do the final 10%. I like that. And I think as as one last note, on this is you can you can approach using ChatGPT to grow your therapy practice as a money making machine. You can say what in my practice right now can or should be improving and or if I did better or did more uh, would make this process more money or free up more of my time. It's not using the system just for the sake of using it. It's fun, it's cool. It's actually why we don't or haven't talked about it as much as some other people or placements because it can be just a shiny object and it doesn't change the fact that work needs to be done. This is just a tool to move an element of the work forward faster. And so that's really what it comes down to is identify a problem that needs to be solved, that you have a hunch that maybe it can help be solved with, and then apply AI as the tool to get that done. Don't just meander in the land of AI just for the sake of it maybe do it for fun or for free time, but know that that doesn't drive direct results for the business if that's the approach. Yeah. I think maybe my last comment is if you know ChatGPT exists, so does everyone else, right? I think this is like <laughs> the help, healthy assumption. I, I was on a call actually Monday with a bunch of group practices. We were talking about SEO and I was like, the landscape for SEO is changing. It's been changing and it's going to continue to change because just like you know, ChatGPT can spit out a 500 word blog in two seconds. Google knows that you can spit out a 500 word blog in two seconds. And so there's kind of deprioritization and reprioritization for a lot of things out there with the emergence of large language models like ChatGPT. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's a massive tool. Don't sleep on it, but I also wouldn't, uh, maybe try to like go all in or bonkers on it just yet. Uh, I think that there's still a lot that's maybe in flux. So. And that's, that's the best place to land here is if you said, I tried it a month ago or I tried it six months ago and it was kind of like, eh, it has massively changed, developed, even something like um, a web AI website feedback since the it can now just like pull in web links. I popped in a couple website links and asked it just to do an audit of the entire website and it produced some great thought, right? So, you know, don't pay that 500 bucks for a random website or SEO audit, make AI do it and see if it gets you with enough things to move forward. Yeah. I love it. Till next time guys. Much else, but yeah, we'll see y'all.